Good morning, sir. So me, Ong Xiling, and my group mates, Lo Jain, Chin Manchin, and Vivian will be presenting about our second assignment, including these laws and what changes can be done to enhance media freedom. So firstly, Film Censorship Act 2002, also known as Lembaga Penapis Film, LPF, is used to implement rules and regulations for film censorships and also censor films. So during film evaluation, the guidelines that should be followed includes security and public order, religion, social culture and decorum and morality. So not only that, there are also three film categories, including U, P13 and P18. And no film can be broadcasted on screen without going through the boards. The case I've chosen today is Mahi Ramakrishnan, an investigative journalist and filmmaker in Malaysia who created the documentary Bo about human trafficking of Rohingya girls from Myanmar who are forced into marriages in Malaysia. So here are a few scenes that were banned while going through the boards. She was also issued to mute audio and erase subtitles translation of selected scenes because those scenes were deemed to be as seditious and they could cause a bad reputation for the country. They have argued that the board censored vital parts of a film restricting their freedom of expression and creativity and also taking away the audience's rights to know what is happening around the world. The filmmaker argued that the boards decide what they want to show the audience and what they do not want to show the audience while suppressing the filmmaker's freedom in content creating. They have also said that the boards should not be scared about important topics like human rights, as these topics can ignite many, many important conversations in the future. So in my opinion, the authority should improve the law by redrafting what is considered forbidden information about human rights violation, and also take serious consideration that information with no immediate risk of serious harm should be disclosed to public to raise awareness in our society. And lastly, they should be more specific and transparent on what should not be screened in terms of human rights because, because human rights is under the guidelines, social, cultural, but that is not specific enough. The way they have censored the film just because of one guideline is too vague and it's basically indirectly taking away the audience's human rights to know what is happening around the world off screen. That is all for me, and I'll pass it to my member for the next law. Thank you. So I'm going to talk about CMA. CMA Communications and Multimedia Act 1998 regulates the converging communications and multimedia industries, and it governs the distribution of offensive and objectionable content in order to maintain a better media environment. In CMA, there's a section 233, which refers to the improper use of network facilities and services, is often used to prohibit offensive, indecent, obscene, false content in the media that the person can be charged if publishes or shares those prohibited contents on network facilities or application service. For example, there's a case, a Malaysian political graphic designer and filmmaker named Fahmi Reza, who frequently expresses his political views on social media, was arrested under Section 233 for posting a clown illustration of former Prime Minister Najib Raza on Facebook. He was found guilty of misusing network services to create a statement as an intention to annoy other people on 20 February 2018, and his appeal was rejected on 5 July 2019. CMA has been acting as a gatekeeper for the industry since 1998, yet there are still arguments stating that it doesn't provide a specific definition of offensive content in the act. Article 19 also indicated that it was used to arrest individuals expressing the progressive views, and this caused a worrying trend on the boundary of free speech in the media environment. In my opinion, as CMA is the most overarching media law in Malaysia, it should be reviewed and improved. The definitions and regulation details also limitations should be clarified to let the media person know about the maximum freedom while creating media contents. This also helps to prevent a person who was charged with hosting offensive statements to establish loopholes of law. The section 233 also needs to be amended as the use has suffocated freedom of speech and expressions, also the freedom of thoughts in Malaysia, 
that the citizens were forced to be silenced from expressing themselves. Hence, CMA should be amended as soon as possible to protect the safety of the media environment and at the same time ensure media freedom in Malaysia. Now I'll be talking about Printing Press and Publication at PBPA 2012. Printing Press and Publication Act PBPA 2012 is an act to amend the PBPA 1984. It's an act to govern the use of printing press, including printing, importation, production, reproduction, publishing, and distribution of the publication, as well as concern related thereto. PBPA provides a provision to the minister to control the undesirable publication, including any false publication against morality and the law. For example, Sepaka Effective Sandia Braha versus Menteri Dalan Negeri and Arno, and another appeal on 9 October 2014. The appeal concerned the Deputy Minister for Home Affairs decision to ban two publications, namely Perak Darul Katun and One Funny Malaysia both of which contain a compilation of cartoon under Section 71 of the PBPA. Both books were political parodies and satires. It was predicated on the fact that they were prejudicial to public order. The order was challenged in the High Court for being illegal, pre pre uh, procedurally improper and irrational. Although PBPA has been amended, it still suppresses the freedom of speech which is stated in Article 10 a Every citizen has the right to freedom of speech and expression. The government action in banning these two books is inconsistent with the representation it makes to the world about promoting human rights. Not to mention that Malaysia was elected to the Human Rights Council for the term from 2010 to 2013. So, what can be changed? Firstly, I personally think that the political parties cannot be involved in controlling the newspaper agency to ensure the newspaper agency can publish fair and just articles without being threatened. Besides, the minister should not have the authority to revoke the print media license because the newspaper are still subject to the minister's summons if their published content that disappoint them. The PPPA complete led off licensing criteria is, is incompatible with the international standard and it leaves the government vulnerable to misuse and abuse. In conclusion, PPPA should be repealed instead of review as there are enough law to ensure the genuineness of the news published and it brings more disadvantages than advantages. If legislation is to be amended, confer with Suruhanjaya Hak Asasi Manusia, Suhakam, and the civil society organization in an open and transparent method. Next, we will be talking about Defamation Act 1957. This act protects those whose reputation was lowered or damaged due to defamatory actions. The act can only be applied on civil suits as criminal offenses are regulated by the penal code. There are two types of defamation. Libel is in tangible forms like pictures, writings, or even audio recordings, whereas slander is in intangible forms like spoken words or even gestures. The case that we will be talking about today is where Malaysian businessman Lo Moi Fa claimed that Dr. Salva Kumar Tiruna Vukarasu, the Star newspaper, and Te Ing Hock defamed him by publishing a newspaper article on 6 February 2013, implying that he was involved in fixing court cases to favor him. On 13 June 2014, he was compensated 150000 by the High Court for the damage cost. The argument is that in terms of punishment, there is a great imbalance between defamation and other crimes. For example, the defendant should be given a heavier punishment to set an example for others not to commit the same offense. Defamation is not just a small crime and can cause more loss than it can be compensated for. Changes that can be done. It should be amended to protect the right of the defendant by allowing the publishing of any personal information about the claimant as long as the defendant can prove that what he said was true because it is a comprehensive defense. In short, defamation law is important for the media to carry out their role and maintain their editorial independence. However, this law should be reviewed to provide protection to the defendant who tells the truth. Lastly, we will be talking about the Sedition Act 1948. 
This act criminalizes anyone who does, tries to, or conspires other to say or commit an act that is deemed seditious, or tries to question, stir hatred, or conspire against the rulers of the country, the government, the administration of justice, or the young deportuan ago. The case that we will be talking about today is the case where Susan Loon, a Malaysia Kenyan reporter, was charged under Section 41C Sedition Act 1948 for publishing an article with the title EXCO Man Grilled for Four Hours Treated Like a Criminal. The quote came from a phone interview with Penang Executive Councillor P. Boon Po following the mass arrest of the Voluntary Patrol Unit on Merdeka Day. The argument is that in cases like this, the content in the article should not be deemed seditious as P was simply revealing what he experienced during the detention, whereas Susan was reporting the interview statement. None of what she said matched the definition of sedition. As a journalist, it is our duty to inform the citizens of the events that are happening in the country, and we should have the right to do so. So what can be changed? In my opinion, the act should be amended and stated specifically and evidently that the actions or words are meant to incite the public to rebel, stir hatred, or conspire against the authority. There should also be a fine line between what is seditious and revealing the truth that it is the public's right to know. With this, the government will no longer be able to exploit the act for their own benefits and freedom of expression would be enhanced in the country. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you.